When we finished bicycle design part one, we left our designer with the problem of the smallest bicycle that could be built with 700C wheels to fit a small customer. And if I remember correctly, we ended up with a design like this. And I think I said incorrectly at the end of that session that the top tube length on that bicycle is 20 inches. Uh, if I said that, I was mistaken. The minimum length is really 21 inches with a seat tube of about 20 inches. And I'd commented that for our typical customer, this would be fine for someone who is around 5 feet 4 inches, which excludes a lot of the population of women who ride bikes. So, now our designer was left with the problem of how to accommodate the smaller woman. And the designer wanted to do a couple of things. First of all, make this top tube length shorter, and also make the seat tube length shorter so that the rider can straddle a top tube that's closer to the ground, and so that the rider can reach handlebars that are closer. So if we look at this, all the problems are coming from the front end of the bicycle. Frankly, they're coming from the wheel size. The wheel size is telling us where the down tube has to be. The head tube has to be a certain length, so that's telling us where the top tube has to be. That's limiting this dimension right here. Because we don't want the pedals to hit the front wheel on a sharp turn, the size of this wheel is also limiting the length of the top tube. It can only be a certain length, otherwise we're going to have interference there. So let's go back and look at this and see what happens when we start playing with different wheel sizes. If I take a bike that looks like this, and my apologies again for being a really raunchy drawer, and I have, say, a 700C wheel on it. Suppose I decide to put a 650 wheel on it. That wheel is going to be a little bit smaller in diameter this way. Now you can see right away that because the wheel is smaller, it's enabled me to bring the down tube down a little bit more. And as you've learned, once the down tube comes down, so can the top tube. The other thing that's happening is I'm losing a little bit of radius here, so I can bring the top tube back, the front of the bicycle towards the rear, because I'm not going to have a problem with running into the pedal quite as much. Now when I look at this design, what's happening to these numbers for top tube and seat tube? And I'm assuming horizontal top tubes. We'll talk about fairly conservative designs here. Now I can get down to around 20 inches on my top tube. I can get down easily to about 19 inches or so on the seat tube. So I'm really starting to buy something here now. I've got a much smaller bike. But look what happens if I go all the way to a 24 inch front wheel. Now I've got a front wheel that's somewhere down here. Now I can really bring the down tube quite a bit, down quite a bit. And I can really move the front of the bicycle towards the rear quite a bit without having interference in this area. It's not untypical to see bicycles that use 24 inch front wheels with seat tubes of around 16 inches, with top tubes under 19 inches, 18.5 to maybe 18.9 inches. Really, really short. Haven't done anything with the rear. I mean, I can really do anything I want with the rear. The rear doesn't affect the rest of the design of this bicycle. All the rear wheel does is drive the bicycle by virtues of the cogs on the rear wheel. So, if you have a bike that says has a 24 inch or a 650 front wheel and a 700C rear wheel, you're going to go as fast as the person next to you who's riding a bike with a 700C rear wheel and a 700C front wheel, provided you both have the same kind of gearing. So gearing's really not an issue here. This is, this is really kind of neat when you think to it. Let's look at some of the numbers behind this and just see what am I talking about in the way, in the way of numbers here. Well. Let's look at a tire radius. Okay, and first let's look at 700C. It has a radius of about 33.2 centimeters. A 650 26 inch road tire is 31.1 centimeters, and the lowly 24 inch is 28.5 centimeters. Now, let's look at the difference in the radius of these tires. The difference between these two is about 2.1 centimeters. For those of you who like inches, that's about eight-tenths of an inch. 
The difference between the 700C and the 24 inch is one and a half, I'm sorry, 3.7 centimeters or one and a half inches. So you're buying a lot. You can see how we can start to make these top tubes shorter. Essentially, this is dictating to you right here just how much shorter the top tube can be because of that smaller wheel. And I'll also point out that when you have bikes that are smaller, and we're talking about four riders, say, five, three and under, we're talking about using crank arm lengths of around 165 millimeters as opposed to the standard 170 millimeters. So you're also buying a little bit of clearance between the pedal and the front wheel by virtue of a shorter crank arm on a smaller bike. So everything's coming into play. Your choice of the front wheel, be it 24 inch or be it 650, you're changing the crank arm length to fit a smaller rider. That's all helping out here. Now some people ask this question. They say, well, you know, if you're gonna make a bike with 24 inch front wheel, why don't you just put a 24 inch rear wheel on it too? Wouldn't it look a lot more symmetrical? You'd have 24 and 24. Well, yeah, you can do that for sure. I mean, there's no, no reason why not from an engineering standpoint, but the gearing gets to be kind of weird. If you've got a 24 inch wheel back here, you're gonna to have to have substantially higher gearing on this bike to get the equivalent of gearing that you would have on 700C. And I don't think too many manufacturers wanna play around with customizing crank sets and cassettes to do that. So we tend to put 24 on the front and 700C on the rear and leave it alone. But you do find all the time 650 on the front, 650 on the back. And the reason there is because frankly, there's just not that much difference in size between 650 and 700C. What is it in terms of radius? About eight tenths of an inch. And if you go back to the video I did on gearing and calculate your gearing on a 650 wheel, identical gearing on a 700C wheel, you'll find unless you're a very, very, very strong rider, there's no reason at all to start switching around gears to compensate for the smaller 650 wheel. Now there's one other thing I should say. We are in this country just hung up on wheel sizes. I mean, 24 just makes some people crazy. Not me, of course. 650, we've learned to live with. 700C, A-okay. We'll do that in anybody's book. I want you to think about wheel sizes. There's nothing sacred about the size of a front wheel. I have some people say to me, well, you know, if a bike has a 24 inch front wheel or if it has a 650 rear wheel or front wheel rather, isn't the handling going to be squirrely? Am I going to feel something different? Well, no, you shouldn't. If you go back to that video I first made on Bicycle Design 1, there was discussion in there of handling of a bike. We got into uh, the angles, the caster angle. The designer designs around the front wheel, so it shouldn't handle any differently. But here's the ultimate little thought test that I think will get you in the mood. Imagine we go to a planet somewhere far away from Earth, and we find instead of their average female being five feet four inches, their average female, holy cow, is only a millimeter tall. I mean, she's tiny. Can you imagine what size wheel she would have on her bicycle? It would be a teeny tiny little wheel. I mean, it would be a speck of dust to us. Yet I bet you she's not complaining about how her bicycle handles. Why should she? Bicycles designed for her little bitty speck of a wheel. Our bicycles are designed for whatever wheel size we use. So please don't think that there's something wrong with 24 or wrong with 650 and right with 700C. That's simply not the case. What it comes down to is you have an awful lot of choice as a consumer. If you're a smaller rider, 5.3 or under, you've got bikes with 24 inch front wheels, 650, 650, 700, 700. The ball's back in your court. When you test ride this bicycle at a dealer, knowing what you know now about bicycle design, ask yourself, am I comfortable? Is this the bike I want to ride on all summer, all season for the next few years of my life? There's no reason why the answer shouldn't be yes. There's way too much available and you have way too much information to you as a consumer to make a wrong choice. It's up to you when you go to the dealer to ask the hard questions because now you know how to do that and to walk out of that shop with a bicycle that you absolutely love and can't wait to get on every single day. So this is the conclusion of Bicycle Design Part 2. And yeah, there's a Bicycle Design Part 3 on the way.